Hello and welcome to a recap of today's Python and Django live code hangout. We've been working on the companionship care app and uh, took two tasks. Um, one is a small visual bug where some uh, element was displaying that when it had no data, an image placeholder. And the other one was to try to improve our test coverage reporting and uh, somehow include that in our continuous integration pipeline. So first, the changes in the user interface. When navigating to the people tab, a grid of people will render, I've only got one here, um, who are companions um, for the currently signed in user. In other words, the currently signed in user is offering time uh, to spend with these other with these users here on the people page with these <laughs> they're not actually using the software sorry it's a little bit uh, backward uh, backwards but generally the care companions will start a caring circle for a person who may or may not be technologically savvy or capable of using technology or interested although if they are they can certainly also join the group and add activities In any case, when you have these groups defined, you have an option of choosing a photo. That adds a little bit of a personal touch. But being optional, when no photo is provided, it shouldn't display anything. Now, previously, there was a placeholder photo here displayed uh, with a missing source attribute. In other words, the source attribute would be defined, but there would be no image so Django couldn't output a correct source attribute so it was kind of like a broken image thing and that was also appearing here in this people card so all we had to do is just add a conditional check if that image has been uploaded then you can render it otherwise it should just omit that for yeah making the user interface look a little cleaner one other small touch was to um, tweak the layout here a bit on the medium screen so when I'm in my local development, I've got the code and um, app running side by side in the browser. And this is essentially what you'd see as a medium width screen according to the bootstrap um, breakpoint settings, sort of like a tablet view. And then they were just a bit of scrunching up. Uh, this icon was rendering above the first, um, above the companion's word. and it meant that this whole thing was pushed down just slightly and it uh, looked a little bit bad, but uh, wasn't a deal breaker or anything. But those little uh, aesthetic issues, they kind of add up and give you a sense that this there may be other issues underneath um, the surface that are even worse. So you kind of want to pay attention to those details. I'm also really interested in hearing some feedback from people who are design oriented. I'm doing sort of a minimum viable design here using Bootstrap primarily and leaning on the work of the designers who have put their time and effort into making Bootstrap a mature and quality framework. Granted, there's more improvements that could be made. So let's take a quick look at the code. So relating to the layout issues, I just needed to define a medium width, uh, medium column width. I had already um, defined medium column settings for the right this right hand side column, but since I only had defined the left column as a call, there was something weird, uh, and also I believe the column width of four was too narrow for this word and icon to appear side by side. I can change the font size as well. But this is heading level two using default heading level two font size, which is quite large even compared to heading level one. I think the only difference is the um, font weight. The sizes are really close. So the only change there was to change the column width. And then around the image, this source attribute would sometimes be empty because this person photo hadn't been uploaded, so I couldn't generate the thumbnail URL, for example, which is a helper provided by Wagtail. And you can 
it's really nice. It lets you specify, you know, what type of thumbnail you'd like and the pixel density, I think, or the width, I guess. And the last, that couldn't generate if the image hadn't been uploaded. So I just needed to check that prior to trying to render this element into the page. And the same thing on the personal list page. Just needed to wrap those fields with conditionals to make sure that they exist. And that's probably a common pattern with fields in general. You don't want to render empty markup, even if it's not displaying to the user, because it could cause layout issues, unexpected issues, and it's just um, unnecessary to send that to the user. I have another issue uh, relating to sending unnecessary or duplicate um, modal dialogue markup <laughs> to the user on this page, but that's something I'm going to try to tackle separately. I don't know what the solution will be. But that's neither here nor there. So the other task uh, would, was a bit of a head scratcher. And I'm still not sure <laughs> that it works correctly. I'm pretty sure it works. Um, but that'll be, truth will be told there in subsequent pull requests. But essentially, I want to use this service called Co uh, Code Cove. And they're pretty um, aesthetically pleasing. They offer free code coverage reporting for open source projects. And the goal here is to start in, um, improving the health of this project, including extending the code coverage. And they'll integrate with your continuous integration pipeline and see continuous deployment if you've got one. I've only begun uh, creating a continuous integration for this project, meaning in this context that when we run, uh, when we create a pull request, there are certain checks that are run and they'll give you warnings if those checks don't pass. Now, one of the checks I want to run is this code coverage, see how it's changing over time. Right now, it's telling me there's no code coverage report uh, uploaded for the base commit. And that, I think this means the commit, when I created the f uh, branch from main, at that point, I, I didn't have a coverage report functionality because this pull request is what adds that. So I think this error is just saying, hey, we don't have any report to compare. So we can't display a, a comparison report. So we'll see if that works in the future. It, this took me several attempts. It was um, it wasn't super difficult, but uh, it was a bit confusing. But what it boiled down to, and I what I believe the final um, working command is, I added to our Python workflow another step that generates code coverage. Actually, two steps. I, I should have named this one a little bit better. Firstly, we generate code coverage and using poetry as the project package manager here. We have in previous steps installed it, installed the dependencies, and then we run a few other tasks, linting and code formatting, you know, sorting the um, imports, those types of things. Those were all working, running any tests that we do have, generating coverage report for the test is a new command. So all of these commands need to run in the poetry virtual environment. So you have to prefix them with poetry run, otherwise you get errors, but things can't be found. Then you pass in the command. So we're going to run this Python coverage pi, which was also added during this work session, but not in this pull request. So we're just looking at the final output of the second attempt of this task. The first attempt I added a dependency, but the approach for generating the coverage was kind of a no-go, so I just removed that. So we run this code coverage from coverage pi. We tell it, uh, well, we're running actually a, a manage pi test command, and we're telling the Django manage pi to test our project directory because the structure of this repository all the code is in a subdirectory. But the context for running this command is it's running it here in this root, the project root in the continuous integration pipeline. So I needed to prefix this 
run command with project directory. The manage pi needs to be told also to run tests in the project subdirectory since the kind of Python context is still here at the project root. That outputs a small file, coverage file, which I don't know how to open. I mean, I don't think it has any meaningful output here, but it, that can be passed to Code Cove. But by default, Code Cove doesn't know to look for the Django coverage file as dot coverage. And um, this perhaps convention uh, dates back to early into Django development. So the name of the file, uh, basically I needed to specify that to tell code coverage where the coverage is stored. Now this is not checked into our, our repository. It's not part of the code uh, and it shouldn't be. It, by default, our get ignore excludes coverage related stuff. So I'm using the, the default GitHub uh, get ignore template. It includes a lot of stuff in here that through other experience of developers and Python ecosystem, you know, they've included a lot of things, virtual environments, IDE related stuff. So in your case, yeah, you, by convention don't include coverage. And the GitHub template knows about the coverage of uh, the convention of Outputting coverage is dot coverage, but for whatever reason, code code didn't find it, or I was passing. No, I I experimented with this. Uh, I had to specify this in order to get it to work. But that said, uh, I think it should be running now. We in uh, upcoming pull requests should have um, coverage report, and I'm going to double check off line to make sure everything is, or to see what I can. Uh, what happens in the code coverage user interface uh, when I log in. Okay, that's uh, essentially it. So this has been another Python and Django live code hangout. One announcement, Hacktoberfest is coming up and I've been doing a little preparation, labeling some issues with Hacktoberfest tag and I labeled the project with Hacktoberfest. So starting in October, if you're looking for some tasks to take for your Hacktoberfest contributions, you might consider stopping by our project. And if you do decide to take any of these, just let me know and the GitHub issue, and I'm available for uh, any kind of uh, mentorship or running any questions you need to, uh, you encounter any difficulties or any questions you have, we can uh, discuss those. And if time permits, I can do a little pair programming with you as well, depending on our time zone and availability. So yeah, check, keep us in mind for the um, Hacktoberfest starting in October. All right. Well, thanks again for your time. Hope you're doing well out there.